Hey, Shubi Doodlers, welcome to the Wednesday Drawing Show, where I try to answer your drawing questions and problems. They're your questions that you've either typed in the comments box down below, or you've sent to me at question at wednesdaydrawingshow.com. But let's not talk about it. Let's see what people are asking me. First, we have a comment from Matt Marshall, who comments quite a lot on my videos. Matt says, I just thought of a question. How do you commit 30 minutes a day to drawing with ease? Good question, Matt. Being a human being, my attention is immediately drawn to the words with ease at the end. Human beings are very lazy creatures. And if we see it saying with ease, we'll kind of go with that. Then our brain notices drawing with ease. Oh, we think there's an easy way to draw. <laughs> let's, let's find out more. But in fact, I think what Matt means is how do we find the time to do it? And how do we find the time with ease? Not how do we learn to draw with ease? And the answer to this is all about good and bad habits. Whatever it is that you want to improve in your life, 30 minutes a day is a proven way to sort of make things happen. And the same goes for drawing. As I always say, practice, practice, practice. And if you can do 30 minutes of drawing every single day, that is practice. And all that practice builds up, learning new little skills bit by bit, incrementally, every day. And at over a year or so, it builds up to an awful lot. Over a lifetime, it builds up to a huge amount. Some people will read that and immediately think, only 30 minutes a day and some people will easily settle down and spend an hour two hours most of the day just drawing away happy in a little kind of mental nirvana just drawing 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 and they will wonder how can anybody cope with only 30 minutes a day if your motivation is that you want to become a professional artist of some description then that is slightly different being a professional artist that is a job and if you think of your job that you do now sometimes you probably go oh i don't want to go to work today but to be a professional you have to stop mucking about you just got to learn to sit down and draw and if you can find that 30 minutes a day that will help build up this habit of learning to just sit down and do it but i think most people uh, want to draw for more personal reasons for fun for mental health uh, just to work ideas out, uh, maybe for school, maybe maybe to enhance oh, letters and illustrations for ideas and all sorts of things like that. There are so many reasons that you might want to draw. But if you want to draw more or you really want to improve your skills, then you have to find the time to do it. So if you decide right from tomorrow, I'm going to draw 30 minutes every single day and you get to six o'clock in the evening and you think, oh, I haven't done my 30 minutes yet. Uh, and you think, oh, I've got to find some paper and pencil and oh, what am I going to draw? And so much of this is about preparation and being prepared. And the easiest way to be prepared is to always have a sketchbook and a pencil or a pen absolutely ready to hand. This is an A5 kind of journal. The paper's not that brilliant, but it's OK. Uh, this is a nice little square one and oh it's even got my name on the front and this has nice watercolor paper inside here's a tiny little kind of moleskin one that you can stick in your back pocket or in your handbag or if you're in america your purse and this again has lovely watercolor quality paper inside it and you can have it ready at a moment's notice to go sketching and it can be there with your pen and pencil to open at a moment's notice to start sketching, there is no excuse. Alternatively, you can set up a studio. So you could, if you've got a, if you've got a whole spare room, then that's fantastic. You can set it all up with Alexa in there. So as you walk through the door, you say, Alexa, play me some drawing music, and do 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 do. You're all ready, and there's a desk and lighting. Everything is ready, and you just sit down. You don't have to find anything there may even be the drawing on the table that you didn't finish yesterday because you don't have to do a drawing all in one session you can come back to it the next day in fact you could spend a whole week on a drawing you can spend a whole year on one drawing a 
but just keep doing half an hour on it each day. If you haven't got a room, then find a little corner of a table and say, that is my studio. Put a pad of paper there, put a pen at the other end, maybe make sure there's enough light for you to work and a desk and a chair and a, just that little corner of it. And, and you let everybody know that is my studio. When I am sat there, I am working and I'm drawing and leave me alone. So everybody knows that's what it is. And you don't clear things away. You don't put things back in drawers. You don't think put things back in pencil cases or fancy boxes. It's there ready for you to just pick up and carry on. No excuses. Now that is the easy part. How do you find that half an hour a day? Well, you have to sit down and think about your life and what you do every day. And if you spend an hour every morning on Facebook, you need to think, do I really need to spend an hour on Facebook? Do I need to spend half an hour in the evening on Instagram? Do I really need to watch that useless piece of television in the evening? Do I need to watch another YouTube video about cats? Couldn't I just switch everything off for half an hour, take a bit of me time, sit down, chill and do some drawing. Now, if you are really determined and you get going on this, you might find it doesn't quite fit in with other people's lifestyles, like friends and family, and they'll be going, hey, what's up? You know, you used to do this with us and now you're drawing. And they'll be going, come on, come on. You know, it's just one day. If you miss one day, you'll miss the rest of the week and you'll just give up the whole thing. It's all about habit. All that stuff where you're looking at Facebook or you're going out with friends and everything, that is all habit and it is deeply ingrained and habits are really hard to break and even harder to create new habits. What you are trying to do is to build this new habit of, of drawing every day and releasing yourself from something that was a waste of time, but which had become a habit. And human beings love habit and they hate breaking old habits and they find creating new habits really hard work. So this is a mental process of <laughs> really making yourself do it. You have to put blinkers on. Don't listen to anybody else. You know what you want to do. This is your thing. You are going to do it. And if you really work hard and spend a whole half hour really drawing, you're going to be tired because drawing is hard mental work. And your brain is like your, your biggest kind of muscle there. It takes a lot of blood supply, takes a lot of oxygen. And, you know, really intensely working on a drawing is really, really hard work. And you will probably feel tired at the end of it. But if you keep doing it every day, you build up stamina, just like an athlete would by going out and running every day, it becomes easier and easier. And the more you do every day, you'll find some things about drawing you don't have to think about anymore. They become routine and you can put all your uh, energy into creating these new things, new ideas, because with habit, a lot of it has then just become a natural thing that you do. And so then each day becomes far more interesting with new things. The other problem that people have is they sit down and go, I don't know what to draw. I have that problem myself sometimes. I sit there and think, oh, I don't know what to draw. And the thing is just to start making marks. I've got videos up here of little kind of exercise patterns. And if you just start making these little marks and little crosses and the hatches and things, something happens in your brain. Your busy everyday kind of language, maths, analytical brain, it just starts calming down. And then this creative side of the brain starts to take over and, and it goes, oh, those are nice little marks you're making. Oh, yes, hmm, let, let's do something more interesting. Why don't we do this? And, and if you work with it and let this voice inside you, this creative voice sort of come up and sort of take over, then everything will calm down and the ideas will come and you'll just start drawing different things. And you go, I know what I want to draw. And, and maybe that'll set you off on a little train of thought that will keep you going for the next week or maybe even for the next year. And you'll think, I know what I want to draw for the rest of my life. So Matt asked how to do it with ease. Nothing worthwhile comes easy, but if you stick with it and you kind of manage to do it every single day for a month, you will find it is a lot easier to find that time. You'll find it's a lot easier to just sit down and start drawing and you'll find 
all those ideas will start coming to you far more easily and you will find because you're building skills the drawing comes more easily too and after a month or two you go oh yeah I'm drawing with ease welcome back now, you know, I love answering your drawing questions here on YouTube, but I also love answering questions from my patrons on my Patreon page. And I tend to answer their questions first. We have a private Facebook group where we share images and chat and I do live Zoom tutorials there as well. So why not come and join us on Patreon? Now, the next question came from Lisa Austin, who says, Hi from Australia, Shu. I keep coming back to your videos when I have a bit of free time to explore or improve my drawing skills. I hope you find that 30 minutes a day, Lisa. Also, just wanted to say that you are my inspiration as I try to improve my original drawings to see if I can get them up to a professional level. Duh. Thanks, Lisa. Now, while I can draw or sketch what I see, I have trouble with creating original drawings as I have a Fantasia. I don't have mental images and your videos are proving to be invaluable. So thanks for all the great content. Regards, Lisa. Wow. Now, I have never heard of a Fantasia before. I had to look it up and I found a great article in the Scientific American and I'll put a link in the description box below. In my experience, just about everything human is, is on a spectrum or on a scale. And if you remember your math from school, it all goes on a kind of a standard distribution scale. And so I think Lisa is way down here with sort of no mental image. You know, it's, it's all about the mind's eye and kind of seeing things that you imagine in your brain. And mm, I think I'm somewhere up here. I, I, I see pictures all the time in my brain. When I get a new idea, bang, I can see it sort of playing almost like a movie in my head. Sometimes I can get an idea, run the whole thing through my head in such a powerful visual kind of way. I kind of feel I've done it and I can't be bothered to actually do it in real life because I kind of see all the problems and think mm, maybe that's not worth taking the effort on. So for me, with my kind of sense of imagination, uh, I can't actually imagine not having that visual thing going on in your head. Sometimes when I'm drawing, I get sort of carried away and I'm just drawing away or illustrating and suddenly bang, um, I, it's like I'm in another place. And it, it's such a visceral sort of feeling of being in another place. And it's, and it can be anywhere I've been and it's a kind of a replaying of a memory in sort of fine detail. And I kind of see it all in my eye. It doesn't actually take over my vision or anything like that and doesn't sort of disturb what I'm doing. Uh, but it's, it's it's just like I can just see it in my mind's eye and the thought of not being able to do that is kind of really weird to me. That doesn't solve Lisa's problem though, does it? My instinct is to say, I am not a doctor or a neurologist, psychologist or whatever, so I can't really help on that side. My first thought when I read this was that the answer might be collage and maybe this is something that Lisa does already. The New Scientist article said that people with aphantasia are, are often really quite creative so it's it's not a, a lack of creativity it's this vision thing and Lisa's problem is not in copying something it's sort of doing an original drawing and an illustration really an imaginary illustration and maybe the thing to do is to find the elements that the ideas that are suggest to you and cut them out you know so if you got them out of magazines or something like that and uh, you could take photographs and print them out cut them out and sort of stick them on a piece of paper and arrange them so it's kind of, kind of like a mood board uh, but it would be a, an image board and you can maybe move things around a bit it would be even easier in a program like photoshop which i know to my cost is very expensive but you can get all sorts of photoshop like programs some are free and very good uh, you could take images off your camera you could get friends to pose for you you can pose for yourself with a selfie camera block cut out the things it doesn't have to be done brilliantly and place them around and then you, by using layers you can build layers of different images you can have the, the cityscape in the background, you can have trees in the midground, you can have the character in the foreground, and you can move them about to create an image as if you were doing it in your mind's eye. And then you can draw from the screen, 
or maybe you can put a new layer over the top and draw over it and actually sort of draw digitally or you can print it out and use it uh, again as a kind of an image board for the imaginary original drawing that you want to do if that makes any sense at all <laughs> so thanks lisa it'd be really interesting to know how you do go about it and whether that's what you're probably doing already something like that or if that's useful at all so thanks for those questions, Matt and Lisa. I have more in my inbox. I may be answering your questions soon. But if you have a question right now, don't hesitate. Put it in the comments box below or send it to questions at wednesdaydrawingshow.com. So I hope you enjoyed that. Not much drawing this week. It's all about drawing. And in the meantime, keep drawing, drawing, drawing yourself. Practice, practice, practice. 30 minutes a day. <laughs> and I'll see you next time. You take care now. Bye bye.